Good, good afternoon, everyone. We're going to ask everyone to please stand as we have the Lorraine High School ROTC present the colors. Let's give them a round of applause. You may be seated. Okay, students, good afternoon again. Today we are very blessed and we are honored to have our guest speakers here, uh, visitors from the Charleston Administration Center. I would like to start off by welcoming our superintendent, Dr. Atkinson, please stand and be welcome. welcome. 
very busy ladies to take time out to join us. We appreciate it. Mrs. Uh, Allison Humphreys, our assistant superintendent of middle school. <laughs> Mr. Roth, our assistant superintendent of elementary school. <laughs> and we have some other visitors that uh, have taken time out to join us. Uh, Mr. Romero, he's the Latino Affairs Commissioner. Please stand and be welcome. General Wilson's uh, family members are also here. Please stand and be welcome. Thank you for joining us. Okay, uh, we're going to start right with the program. We are honored again to have everyone here. We're going to start off with a band selection by Ms. Harmon. Next, we will have Ms. Furkron and the orchestra.
finally, we will have the choir come up with Ms. With Ms. Fur Furkron and do a song. Touch 
All right, students, one more round of applause for our musical notes for all those students. Um, students that are not in the band, orchestra or choir, we encourage you to join. They have really grown since uh, the fall and they're just getting better. So please, join up. All right, next we're going to have Miss Amber Rose, who's going to give a uh, message to the eighth grade class. What exactly is eighth grade? To some it's the end of middle school, and to others it's just another grade level to overcome. But to me it's the beginning, the beginning to an awesome life. Remember when you started kindergarten and your teacher asked you what you wanted to be someday? Each year it progressed. Now it's time to make your decision. Many opportunities await us. Let's use our experiences and friendships that we had at General Johnny Wilson to motivate us. So take your experiences from middle school, where you have all grown and become wiser and be inspired to do your best. All you have to do is ask yourself, what do you want to do, and what do you, and how do you get there? When you figure it out, don't settle for less, and always strive to achieve your goals. Each of us will take our own individual paths to an exciting future. Okay, next, Ms. John A. Moore. We'll also continue with a message to the eighth grade students. Hello and good afternoon. My name is John A. Moore. I'm an eighth grade student here at General Johnny Wilson Middle School. Today we have been given a chance to meet General Johnny Wilson, the amazing man this amazing school is named after. General Johnny Wilson is a graduate of Lorraine City Schools. He went on to be an impressive, an impressive career as in the military, becoming a four-star general. The students at GJW are very fortunate to have such an amazing role model. General Johnny Wilson is a true inspiration to all of us. My years at General Johnny Wilson were a great experience. I can't believe they're coming to an end. I would like to thank all of my seventh and eighth grade teachers for their guidance and patience. I also would like to thank the rest of the wonderful staff we have at our school. We have many memories we can never be, that can never be forgotten. I remember cheering on our boys at the football and basketball games, trying to teach our teachers the latest dances and singing happy birthday at our lunch tables. I also have some great memories with one of our best gym teachers that we will ever have, Mr. Joyner. Beginning, being a student at GJW helped me start planning my future. I know which path to go down, and it's all because of the people here at GJW. We're here to guide me and help me find my rights out of my wrongs. With their help, I know what I want to be when, and I'm making sure I'm doing what I need to do to be in college someday. I plan to be a lawyer or a dermatologist, which I recognize will be a lot of hard work. I believe my years at GJW have put me on the right path to obtaining my goals. I know my peers will miss walking down these halls just as much as I will, and we may be saying goodbye to our years at GJW, but we are now beginning the new phase of our life. The, one of the titles of the Dr. Seuss's books is great advice for all of us to follow. The book, All the Places You'll Go, Let's each of us know there are endless possibilities, and if we really set our minds to it. I, in this closing, I would like to say, Eagles can and Eagles will. Now let's hear for our class of 2015. Okay, next we will have Mr. Ricky Perez, who will introduce General Johnny Wilson. General Johnny Wilson was born on February 4th, 1944. He was born and raised in Lorain, Ohio. Upon graduating from high school, from Lorain High School, he entered the United States Army. He eventually earned the rank of a four-star general and served in the military for more than 38 years. In 1999, he retired from active duty with many military awards. These included the Distinguished Service Medal, Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star Medal, Meritorious Service Medal and a Special Forces Tab. He attended bachelor's, master's, and honorary, and honorary decorate degrees from various universities. General Johnny Wilson was named by Ebony Magazine as one of the 100 most influential African Americans in the country. He was also awarded by the NAACP and the Black Engineers with Lifetime Achievement Awards. Throughout his career, he has been active in the community and has maintained a strong relationship with Lorraine. Please help me in giving a warm welcome to General Johnny Wilson.
Now, what about another hand for the band, the orchestra, the choir, and our honor guard? Now, as the choir sang, I know you eagles can fly and be all you can be because Mr. Newsom has said, out of all the institutions he has been to and the various student bodies, you all represent the very best. So I commend you on that. So thank each of you and good afternoon. Now, Helen and I are delighted once again to be here with you. It's always a pleasure to be out of Washington, as the president says. So every time he leaves Washington, we leave Washington. <laughs> to the superintendent who's with us, doing a tremendous job, Dr. Atkinson. <laughs> Commissioner Romero is with us, does a tremendous amount of work with the Latina community. Where's <laughs> And of course, Mr. Newsom and our staff and faculty and all the great teachers. <laughs> now, students of Wilson Middle, it's great seeing all you Eagles here this afternoon. Now, congratulations on a great year and best wishes for next year. And next year, I hope to be back, so you seventh graders will be the senior class and we'll be saying farewell to. Now at the outset, students, I need some help. So what about standing and joining me in extending a round of applause for our teachers? So let me get all the students to stand and give me You see, our teachers are dedicated professionals whom have consistently given their very best towards your development. As a matter of fact, our teachers have simply been unwavering in support of you students. Now, they teach not for fame or fortune, certainly not for fortune, but they teach because they believe in America and they believe in you all. So that is why we owe them, in my opinion, a debt of gratitude for what they do, not only here in Lorraine, but throughout the world, as we visit with them as we travel. Now, class of 2011, we're all eighth graders. Now, this is your day. This is a day of personal pride, a day of satisfaction, and a fulfillment of one of your educational goals. So as a result, eighth graders, this bridging ceremony serves to celebrate and confirm your singular accomplishment as you move along this educational highway. Now accordingly, your last year here at Wilson Middle has allowed you to enhance your basic educational skills, preparing you for your next phase, that being high school. And that should not be your last educational objective. You see, for our nation, in this global, highly competitive world that we live in, education is vital and will certainly be the difference maker in the future as to how America will compete. Now, students, you are our future. Presently, based upon various academic reports, America has lagged behind other nations, and we now have a little work to do in order to reclaim our standing as the world's education leader. I understand that here at Wilson Middle, though, you all are making a difference by increasing your attendance as well as increasing your test scores in certain areas. So I commend you for your effort. Now, for your students, your education is paramount. 
and will certainly be the discriminator to your individual success. Now it doesn't make a difference what kind of background you come from, how many televisions or iPads are in your house, what race or religion you are or what kind of house you live in. You see, the one thing we all have in common is the fact that we, regardless of our personal circumstances, have the opportunity to be educated through the public school system. And as I sit today in various corporate boardrooms, you see, I routinely inform the audiences with a great deal of pride that I am a product of the public school system raised here in South Lorraine and in the public projects. And I consider that a badge of honor. So I say to you, students, believe in yourself. Be accountable for your actions. Use this golden opportunity to complete your education as a ticket to overcome some of the personal hardships that you may have in your lives. So class 2011, you see you now leave Wilson Middle prepared for high school, full of confidence and a sense of satisfaction knowing that you can achieve. Now as a matter of fact, you have the God-given talent to be all that you can be, a teacher, a principal, a general, or the president of the United States. But most important, you have to do your part. The parents and the teachers cannot do it all for you. You have to come to school, you have to pay attention, and you have to learn. There are no shortcuts to success and no substitute for hard work. You see, our collective goal is for you to be a great American patriot, an American who respects one another, a student who says no to drugs and bullying and commits himself or herself to fairness and excellence. Now having said that, I need some help. The people in Washington asked if I would recruit a couple hundred students so that you can assist the military. So I need for everyone to stand up Give me your right hand now because we've got a little oath. So you gotta repeat after me. And I've locked the door so no one can escape. <laughs> it says, I promise to thank my parents and teachers for their support. I promise to treat all people with dignity and respect. With dignity and respect. I, promise to say no to drugs, I promise to say no to drugs, gangs, gangs and bullying. And bullying. I, promise to pull up my pants. I promise to pull up my pants. See, I got you on that one. <laughs> now lastly, I promise to be a better student next year. Okay, give yourselves a big hand clap now. Now, now you see, we, your parents and teachers, are counting on you to succeed. And I am confident that we will not be disappointed because you represent all that is good within America. So congratulations to each of you. Congratulations, class 2011. Best wishes, and God bless America. Gentlemen, um, when, I, when he had us raising our right hand, I thought I was going back in the army again. I was kind of worried, but um, you guys need to stay true to that pledge.
to that uh, speech. We want to thank the general again for taking time out of his busy schedule to come back and speak to you. A lot of people talk about doing that, but your actions always speak louder than your words. So for him to come back and actually do what he said he was gonna do, let's give him another round of applause. She has some words for you guys as well, Mrs. Van Baby. Thank you. While I was listening to the general, a couple of things came into my mind. A couple of um, words that stuck out in my mind. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, Four score and seven years ago. I have a dream. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. These are just some of some very famous speeches that have been given by some very great and honorable Americans. These are the words that have been written down in books. But not all great words are written down. Today you had the opportunity to hear some great words from another honorable man. And I really truly hope that you think about what was said to you. Continuing your education. Many of you have heard this from me over and over. It's the only thing no one can take away from you. And the more you get, the farther you'll go. You guys have more opportunities in life than any generation before you. You also have more challenges than any generation. I hope you take advice that the general gave you. Work hard, do your best, soar with the eagles, nothing can stop you. And I hope that I see all of you crossing that stage in four, five, or six years from now. Good luck to all of you. You are wonderful. Okay. Um, at this time, this concludes our program. Uh, one more round of applause for this has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, TV20, WLCS. To purchase a high-quality copy of the program you just viewed, please call Lorraine City Schools Television at 282-8400. Get my dress for the fashion show. We went what to look my best now. Jenny, Jenny, we started our book report. Here's the cover. Yeah, now all we need is a beginning, a middle, and an end. Jenny! Jenny, 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 Jenny. Hi, honey. Are you feeling blue? What's wrong with being blue? Well, where should I start? <laughs> if you're a teen dealing with stress, there's help. Visit the Will Rogers Institute website for a free booklet about teen stress and how you can de-stress your life. Right. There is a place where a total stranger will give you their blood. A place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. Where a person who doesn't look like you, talk like you, or dress like you will give you shelter after a flood. That place is called America, where we look out for each other. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America.